Three decades ago, the U.S. Army developed the Airland Battle concept, which emphasized securing or retaining the initiative and exercising it aggressively to accomplish the mission. Operations would throw the enemy off balance with a powerful blow from an unexpected direction, follow up rapidly to prevent his recovery, and continue operations aggressively to achieve the higher commander's goals. Airland battle, with its emphasis on initiative, agility, depth, and synchronization, enabled military superiority in subsequent decades. Despite its success, airland battle doctrine had its limitations. It focused on only two domains and predictable patterns of enemy and friendly operations. Today's adversaries have studied airland battle and adapted to develop capabilities that can test joint force operations on land, at sea, in air, space, and the cyber electromagnetic domains. Future Army forces will be prepared to fight and win consistent with the concept of multi-domain battle, operations that create temporary windows of superiority across multiple domains that enable joint force freedom of action in order to seize, retain, and exploit the initiative. Future enemies will implement aggressive anti-access and area denial, or A2AD, strategies to challenge U.S. air and sea dominance and contest U.S. access to space, cyberspace, and the ability to use the electromagnetic spectrum. Adversaries preparing for combat operations against the U.S. have developed a broad range of cross-domain capabilities. To execute multi-domain operations, U.S. forces must achieve and maintain situational understanding of both enemy and friendly capabilities. Joint force commanders rely on land forces to develop understanding by integrating intelligence and operations in close contact with enemy and populations. These actions are ongoing and can occur over a period of hours, days, weeks, or months. To gain situational understanding, Special Operation Forces, or SOFT teams, use networks developed through sustained engagement to gather intelligence, mature situational understanding, and disrupt enemy operations in depth. Army reconnaissance and security formations conduct reconnaissance in all domains and protect assets that are critical to reinforcing defenses or striking enemies in depth. Land forces partner with police and internal security forces to share intelligence, and to disrupt enemy soft teams and collection assets operating in the friendly security zone. Friendly forces conduct deception operations to deny the enemy situational understanding. Combined arms maneuver forces protect cross-domain fires formations and preserve the joint force commander's ability to introduce additional forces. Effective reconnaissance and security operations enable, across domains, the Joint Force Commander to identify enemy critical and vulnerable assets while denying the same information to the enemy. The attack begins with a pre-planned cyber electromagnetic attack on the enemy to temporarily degrade his network. Near simultaneously, artillery units attack a low-altitude air defense unit to create a gap in the enemy's air defense network. Airstrikes exploit this gap and attack air defense and SSM units to prolong the duration of this window. Army Airborne and Air Assault Brigades employing future vertical lift seize key terrain to block approaches to a potential U.S. Marine Corps landing site and threaten enemy lines of communication and air defense sites. With the enemy's surface-to-surface -surface missile batteries and their sensors destroyed or suppressed, a Marine Expeditionary Unit initiates movement while an Army Armored Brigade envelops and destroys the enemy in defensive positions. Because the enemy will detect and attempt to close the windows that friendly forces open, land-based fires preserve opportunities for joint force maneuver, attacking enemy sensors, aircraft, and artillery batteries through a combination of kinetic and non-kinetic cross-domain fires. An important assumption of multi-domain battle is that the competition for domain superiority will be continuous. In this case, enemy countermeasures result in most of the enemy's air defense and rocket artillery networks being re-established within hours of the initial strike. However, U.S. forces can bypass some of the enemy's counteractions by employing mission orders and launching communications balloons to establish temporary communications networks over critical areas. Simultaneously, other formations with organic, direct, and indirect fires attack enemy units, impeding their maneuver. A Naval Surface Task Force attacks enemy surface-to-surface -surface missiles, search radars, and suppresses enemy fires with Army land-based cross-domain fires. 
Finally, the Airborne and Air Assault Brigades, possessing the organic protection, mobility, and lethality across all domains to endure the effects of enemy counterattacks, continue to threaten the enemy rear area. Operating across multiple domains is not a new role for the U.S. Army, Marine Corps, or Special Operating Forces. What is new is the lethality of the battlefield and the conclusion that all domains are contested. These conditions require ready land forces capable of operating in sufficient scale and ample duration to defeat enemies, secure terrain, and project power outward from land to ensure joint force freedom of action. Enabling Army forces in the conduct of multi-domain battle requires advanced capabilities to provide soldiers and units with improved lethality, mobility, and protection. The foundation of the Army's strength has always been and will remain soldiers and teams that possess the capabilities and confidence to overmatch the enemy and win in land combat. Future soldiers empowered with the capabilities to conduct multi-domain battle will provide our nation's leadership with multiple options to deter conflict, protect the nation, and win wars.